When it comes to being an Airbnb host, you may be curious as far as how is cleaning handled if you just have one, two, maybe three units. Should you hire your cleaning service? Should you hire your own contractors or employees? Or should you do it yourself? Well, we're gonna assume for the sake of this video that you have chosen to do it yourself. In that case, I have eight tips for you that will help you in making sure that your place is clean in between bookings so that your guests will be appreciative and you won't get any bad reviews just strictly based on cleaning. So, let's get into it. Hello everyone, in this video in particular, we're gonna be talking about Airbnb, being a host, and eight tips when it comes to cleaning that will help you not forget things and give a good cleaning experience for your guests. For those of y'all that need a little history as far as me and my connection with Airbnb, I've used this sparingly as a customer and towards the end of last year, I decided to hop in the game as an Airbnb host by using a method called rental arbitrage. This is where you lease out an apartment and then you rent that apartment to someone else. This is known as rental arbitrage. Now, if you want more details on how that works, you wanna check this video out because I go over the details of that. Not gonna spend too much time on that in this video since I made a video for it. In this video, we're gonna strictly be talking about the cleaning. Now, I currently have two apartments on the Airbnb platform. If you're curious what they look like, feel free to check them out in the description below. And if you're coming to Dallas for whatever reason and you need a studio apartment to stay in, just message me in terms of an inquiry and you can get 5% off a stay. With that being said, that's my experience as an Airbnb host, but strictly in regards to the cleaning, there is a little something different with me in terms of cleaning. My first job when I was in high school actually was working for my aunt's janitorial service. So I actually have some experience when it comes to cleaning outside of just being an Airbnb host. Even when I used to work in Amazon, I would take on some buildings for my aunt from time to time as side work. So that helped to formulate these eight tips that will help you in terms of cleaning your Airbnb place. So let's get into it. Tip number one, and I do this immediately, is to make sure you have two sets of sheets, comforters, and uh, towels. Reason being is when you start doing the cleaning, you're gonna take the sheets off and the towel, the dirty towels out of the hamper and put them inside of your washer and dryer if you're gonna be doing them on site. But that doesn't mean you have to wait for them to go through all that. You wanna have some fresh sheets and towels to go ahead and put on the bed and uh, put wherever you put your towels at right away. So you don't have to wait for it to finish washing and drying. And in fact, if you wash off site, then this is even better. On top of this, if there's some kind of spill or stain on the sheets or there's a rip, then uh, those sheets may need more attention than you can give at that particular moment. So you don't wanna have to delay the next guest. Cause I'm gonna assume that a guest is gonna be coming in that day, you clean in between bookings. You wanna have those extra sheets and towels there just so if you need to do some more to those sheets for whatever reason, like they need to be replaced because there's a tear, then you'll have some fresh sheets to go ahead and put on there so the next guest isn't delayed and then you might have to potentially get refunds. And as a bonus tip here, you did hear me mention that uh, you take the towels out of the hamper so it actually helps to have one because if you don't have a hamper for the towels to go in, your guests are gonna leave them all kinds of places. They can leave them hanging on drapes in the bathroom. They might leave dirty towels on your bed and then it's soaking the mattress and it's like, it could end up anywhere, so why not control that somewhat and just have a hamper? That's a bonus tip added on to this one. The second tip is to have a good vacuum. Now, if uh, your place has carpet, you wanna make sure that it's uh, vacuumed very, very efficiently. But uh, there are a few different vacuums on the market. I'm not gonna give any one particular suggestion because it really depends on how much you're willing to spend. But all I'm gonna say is figure out what the top tier vacuum costs and what the lowest tier costs and get something in the middle if you're trying to stick to a budget. Of course, if you wanna go all out and you can afford the top tier, by all means get it. Just don't get the one at the bottom because there actually is a massive difference in performance. You could vacuum a place with one of those like cheap vacuums and uh, you'll see the dust bag or whatever they call it, fill up. And then you could follow it with another vacuum that's better and it'll fill up. And you're wondering like, well, what the heck did the first vacuum do? It's just because it's not as powerful. So make sure you get a decent vacuum, at least somewhere in the middle tier in terms of pricing. But if you can afford it, uh, feel free to go ahead and get the top tier. Just don't get the bottom tier. 
Tip number three is to ensure that your guests don't have access to your cleaning supplies or supplies in general. So uh, there's two solutions to this. Uh, you can keep your supplies on site in some kind of a lock box where there's a combination or a key that you need to uh, access them, or you can keep them off site. But the point is don't have them accessible to your guests. Cause let's say if you have uh, extra cleaning supplies, like you know your bleach in there or your paper towels or your toilet paper in uh, on site, uh, they're gonna assume those are just for them to use and they're gonna abuse and it's gonna go through extremely fast. So when something is not much of like, I only have two to three rolls of uh, paper towels available at each time. Same goes for toilet paper. Anything past that, the guest needs to purchase them themselves. If they see that you have an abundance of toilet paper, you best believe they're gonna overuse it. So just don't make it available, okay? Now that doesn't mean that you shouldn't make some cleaning supplies available to your guests though. I actually do have like bleach and other cleaning supplies at the bottom of the drawer in my kitchen because if you actually make cleaning supplies available, uh, especially for your guests that are staying long term, they, they don't, people don't tend to want to stay in a dirty apartment, so they actually will clean up behind themselves. And even some of my short term guests will clean up behind themselves if the cleaning supplies are made available. I keep those separate from what I use, but I just make them available just in case the guest wants to clean up after themselves. And you'd be surprised how many people actually do it as long as they have the supplies. So making supplies available can go a long way. So I guess that's like a double tip. Number four is to check these three things immediately because there's a good chance you might just forget to check them. Check the refrigerator, check the oven, and check the microwave. Obviously you wanna check the refrigerator because it's one of the easiest things to just forget to check. And if the guest has leftover spaghetti or something in there, you need to go ahead and throw that stuff away and make sure you clean down the uh, drawers and everything in the refrigerator so it looks fresh, sparkling, and clean. The uh, second, the oven, is one of those things you can easily overlook. So you wanna make sure you check it to see like if uh, they were using the oven and some of the, whatever they're cooking starts dripping towards the bottom, then you'll need easy off to uh, scrub it off and get it off. And for the microwave, one of those things is easy to, overlook just check to see if it's been used you'll be able to tell because of the smell but uh also visually you'll see like just pieces of things all over the place like it tends to happen in the microwave so be sure to check those a good habit that i have i just check the refrigerator immediately upon going inside the property and i'll open the oven and open the microwave and regardless of what i do next i'm not gonna forget those two because they're left wide open that's one of the ways that you could do it if you don't want to clean them immediately, at least you're setting up a little precaution so that you don't forget. Tip number five is to clean the place in the uh, following order. So obviously you put your sheets and your towels in the washer, then you go ahead and replace them on your bed and also wherever you're gonna keep the uh, towels at. Then I will clean the apartment in the following order. I will clean the kitchen first, then the living room, then the bathroom, then the bedrooms. And then I'll leave the floors for last. So everything I mentioned, I'm not doing any sweeping or mopping. That's left towards the end. But the key takeaway is to make sure you clean the floors last because you're gonna be walking in and out of the apartment probably. And you don't wanna be tracking like any dirt or any mud or just like anything that your shoes will like pick up like pebbles and stuff like that. So in order to avoid doing work twice, just do the sweeping and the mopping at the end. Tip number six, is to uh, check your dryer sheets and uh, make sure that the lint hasn't filled in the dryer. This one of the things is easy to overlook and I always check it after. That's part of the reason I recommend doing your towels and your sheets first as far as washing and drying. Obviously when it's finished washing, you need to throw them in the dryer, I forgot to mention that. But uh, once that's finished, make sure you check the uh, lint holder and empty any lint because uh, guests tend to not, they're not gonna know how to check it because they may not be familiar with that type of dryer and they're probably not going to. So that means they may start drying and you run the risk of like a fire hazard because something could start smoking. Uh, we don't want that. So just make sure that it's empty for every guest so that there's nothing in there. Tip number seven, and this is something a lot of people aren't gonna think about. When it comes to cleaning the bathroom, you wanna clean the bathroom walls that are immediately surrounded around the toilet. Now, what I mean by that is, uh, as uh, men, we don't sit on toilets when we do number one. So there may be a tendency for stuff to splash. And the splashing isn't limited to just touching the toilet. 
Uh, sometimes that splash will go on the immediate walls next to the toilet. And you don't want a guest to see that because if the next guest sees that, they're going to be grossed out and you are not going to be a five star host. So make sure you clean those every single time because it's probably something that will happen frequently because us as men, we don't sit down on toilets for number one. And it's one of those things where you can, there's not really much you can do to control it. It's just going to happen. You just got to make sure that you clean it up. And tip number eight, you want to make sure you have a bed cover for your bed. Now, uh, this can save you literally hundreds of dollars. But if a guest has some kind of accident on your bed, like let's say uh, they have a child with them and they have a little accident. Let's say they waste wine or waste something on the bed. Well, it's a lot easier to replace a $30 bed cover than it is a like five or six hundred dollar king size mattress and even if you file a claim with airbnb and get to collect your money in my experience the cheaper the claim is the more you're probably going to get out of it now i know that airbnb has come out with air cover and it might be covered but uh in general it's just going to be easier to just replace that bed cover or even wash it in some cases as opposed to having to replace a mattress because that stuff will sink into the mattress and will create a smell so even if you get the visual out the smell is probably not going to go anywhere just have that bed cover so if anything touches it then uh all you gotta do is clean the bed cover i literally had a situation like this happen a few days ago where a guest for whatever reason was uh, spilled all this grease on the bed and uh some of it soaked into the bed cover but not the mattress thing guys. So all I need to do is wash the bed cover. And if it was something where the bed cover couldn't be recovered, I have a replacement bed cover just waiting on standby. So make sure you get a bed cover. Please don't skip this step because if you end up having to replace a king size mattress, even if you get reimbursed for Airbnb, a mattress take time to deliver or they're gonna take a truck to deliver. So it's gonna just be a big hassle versus a bed cover. You could replace that probably the same day if you wanted to. I know I said I had eight tips for you, but I got a bonus. Your bonus tip is to have an audiobook or a podcast or something that you listen to while you're cleaning. Reason being is uh, I know it's going to be tempting to jam out to your music, or you might not even be thinking about listening to anything, but cleaning is a great opportunity to listen in and stay up to date on the news in your industries or just learn a new skill set. Don't waste it. Go ahead and be gathering knowledge while you're cleaning because cleaning isn't going to require a lot of mental activity so it's a missed opportunity for you to engage your mind and learn something new so get some kind of audiobook or listen to some kind of podcast just a shout out myself you could always listen to my audiobook the anatomy of financial success the key to building financial confidence and destroying insecurities about money it's available on audiobook in all the platforms google books Apple Books, also Audible and Amazon, and it's also on this YouTube channel. So, a little personal shout out, but it doesn't have to be me. Just anything that's engaging your mind so that you can keep growing. With that being said, that concludes my eight tips when it comes to how to maximize your cleaning efforts when you're cleaning between bookings as an Airbnb host. If you're thinking about coming to Airbnb host, but you haven't done so already, you can actually sign up using the link in the description or the pinned comment. Full disclosure, that is an affiliate link, so I will get something out of it. But uh, sometimes you'll get a sign on bonus as well. And if you're interested in more Airbnb content, be sure to check the pinned comment because I'll leave some videos that will be good to know if you're looking to become an Airbnb host. If you have any questions or comments or video suggestions, feel free to leave those in the comment section below. This has been Elijah with Financial Anatomy. I will catch you in the next one. Subscribe if you're new and hit that bell notification if you want to be notified when the next video drops. Catch you around.